There has been several drug deals going on in front of the house. So the concern is, is that they are out very late at night. They walk by our house several times. They're seen looking in, you know, in the yards. They're looking at the cars. Um, the bus stops are a huge concern. They're walking by. Sometimes they're trying to talk to the children. No one wants to go outside. Um, it's just, it's not the same. That's a neighbor who lives near the Nilo Hotel in Warwick, the Pontiac Village section. Now comes word we're taping Friday of a death at that hotel in Warwick. It's completely been leased out for use as a homeless shelter, whether neighbors like it or not. Warwick Mayor Frank Picozzi joins me. He told me earlier he wishes he knew about this ahead of time. Mayor, do you know anything about this report of a death at the hotel? It may be routine or it may be something else. Do you know any late information on that? Um, I know the police are responding to a lot of calls, a number of calls. Um, there were a couple of things like a domestic dispute. Uh, we're getting calls here at the office. We tell them to go to the police. We're maintaining a big police presence in the neighborhood there. And okay. keeping an eye on things as best they can. Okay, so the police are over there. There have been calls and complaints. Let's put that on the record because I know earlier we had a check as to, as to how many cops were going over there and for what. But you know your late information is. What have you had over there the past couple of days? Well, there have been a number of them. I'm not, I don't know. I can't give you the exact number, okay. but they're responding to all citizen complaints there. All right. Mayor, I know that you got an earful from those constituents, homeowners right across the street. They said a hotel is one thing, a homeless shelter is another. This is not what we want, not what we bargained for. Is there any relief for the mayor? Any news you have for us? Or is that it? Crossroads gets its way. Uh, well, they already have the deal in place. They didn't come to us. I wish they had because they could have met with the neighbors. I think that's the way to do it. Um, because they did this last year. It wasn't Crossroads. It was another organization. I think it was Amos House. There were a number of problems there then. Uh, but they just dropped it on uh, even our, my administration. It was like a bombshell. We had no advance notice. There were concerns last year, and I think they could have worked on addressing them, at least with the neighborhood. But they didn't show them that respect, though. All right. At this point, Mayor, are you looking into zoning changes? Did you call up the governor? Did you call Crossroads? Are you saying, guys, this is not right? I know you're doing, you know, you're doing good work there. We don't want anybody freezing. We don't want anybody to go hungry. But this is right. not the right place for it, Mayor. Yeah, like, as I said, we don't have a choice. I did speak to the director of Crossroads. Um, she assured me it would be better. She was going to address concerns with the neighbors. Uh, so it's, it's an ongoing situation. It's, it's not the place I would have put them. It's right in the middle of the neighborhood. Um, I would have looked for another, another um, place. But as I said, we don't have any choice. It's a, a signed contract. We have zoning ordinances to say um, you can't stay for more than 30 days, but they could, they could get around that by just simply shifting the rooms around. So that's it. There's, there's, no, there's no relief. The guy runs a hotel, and if he wants to lease it out to a homeless shelter, that's it. You've got to live with it. You know, can you imagine across the street a small little cape or what, what have you, and somebody's looking to put that up for sale, and the person comes and says, well, you know, what are you asking for house? By the way, what's that over there? Oh, that's a homeless shelter. You could see how damages are being done here. Yeah, I do. Um, I heard in that recording um, they were talking about the bus stops, yep. and the superintendent told me this morning that they've made a lot of individual bus stops, so that doesn't happen anymore. They don't have one group bus stop. They're picking them up in front of houses to, to at least um, uh, bury that concern. Um, not bury, but, you know, um, alleviate that concern for parents. All right. What about zoning? I know that the councilman uh, who serves that ward said, I'm going to look in the zoning. Are there any, is there any zoning relief? I mean, a hotel is different from a whole homeless shelter. Uh, there is an ordinance on the books. Uh, it, it limits how long they can stay in one place. But um, I don't think it's ever been enforced in the past because we have extended stay hotels here. Um, I know there are programs over at Motel 6. Uh, Solicitor is looking at it, but I, as I said, you can easily get around that ordinance by just changing the rooms at, um, after 30 days. Okay, let me play this uh, quick clip from Karen Santilli. She's the woman who runs Crossroads. And I think she aggravated people even more in, tr in trying to make her point. Let's play that, then you respond, Mayor. People have the right to be safe and to have a safe place to shelter until we can get them housed. And we're gonna do everything we can to keep the environment safe. We have shelters all around the state where there are neighborhoods. I don't understand. I think it's fear and ignorance. Mayor, take it. Uh, fear and ignorance. Um, I agree a lot of, with a lot of what we said. We do have to house them, but I, you know, it's it's not fear and ignorance. These people went through this last year. It's not ignorance. They they experienced the homeless being there last year, and there were a lot of problems in the neighborhood. And then when they closed it down, a lot of the homeless people stayed there. And it's not all of them. The vast majority go there. They're respectful. They're not any tr any problems at all. But there's just an element there. They 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 go to the mall. They shoplift. Um, they work around the neighborhoods. I've heard reports of public urination. 
So what she said was a little insensitive there. It's not ignorance and fear by the neighbors. I mean, they're concerned. It's their neighborhood. They live there. Yeah. I, uh, do, do you have a better spot for this? I know you said there were some uh, hotels over on the Post Road. You've got some on Jefferson Boulevard. You've got the Motel 6 in your town. Would that have exactly. been better? It's, it's more isolated. I'm not sure if they, what the availability was. I'm not sure what the deal was. I don't fault Nilo. It's a business move. They have full occupancy for in, in the off season. So, you know, as a businessman, you have to respect that. Um, the state's funding it and Crossroads. As I said, Crossroads should have went to the neighborhood, should have came to me for at least and talked to the neighbors. And maybe they could have, um, you know, constructed right. staff to alleviate the problems, the curfews or whatever. So now we're just kind of stuck with a fallout. All right. Mayor, is this story over as far as you're concerned? There's nothing that can be done. They're there. You're going to have to live with it. Or is your solicitor have a case open? Is there more to come? Or let's say period or so dot, dot, dot. What is it? The solicitor is looking into the ordinance. Um, it's on the books now. Uh, the police are monitoring the situation. We're hoping, you know, things uh, stay quiet, but it's not over. I mean, you know, we're not we're not going to just let uh, the residents be fearful. Uh, you know, we're, we're going to just have to monitor the situation. Police, as I said, police okay. not only have a heavy presence, they're responding to every concern. So we're just going to watch it right now. Mayor Frank, because you're good to come on, thanks very much. And Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Gene.